the hungry leprechaun. Once upon a time, and a very hard time it was too, everyone in Ireland was poor. The Irish ground was so poor it grew little but rocks and dandelions. Young Patrick O'Michael O'Sullivan O'Callaghan was so poor he only had dandelion soup to eat. <clears throat> Even the leprechauns were poor, not a pot of gold amongst them, but Patrick O'Michael O'Sullivan O'Callaghan didn't know that. He believed in leprechaun magic, and he believed that if only he could catch a leprechaun, he'd be rich. He'd make the little man give him his gold. So every day when young Patrick went out to dig dandelions for dinner, he watched sharply for a stray leprechaun. Now the, the littlest of all little men lived in a cave under the hill by Patrick's house. His name was Tippery, and he was a very, he was very, very hungry. One day, much as he feared to, he came out in broad daylight looking for something to eat. And it happened that Patrick O'Michael was nearby digging up his dandelions. Quick, sharp, he spied the little man, and quick jump, he flopped his hat over the creature. He'd caught him. Patrick O'Michael O'Sullivan O'Callaghan had caught himself a leprechaun. Give me your gold or I'll never let you go, ordered Patrick, all eager and gay. I haven't any gold no more than you, said Tippery, all miserable and hungry. Are dandelions good for eating? Then Patrick O'Michael peeked under his hat and saw that he'd caught the thinnest, the weakest, the most hungry looking leprechaun that ever lived. And he was sorry for the little man. Dandelion soup is better than nothing at all, he told Tippery. I'll take you home and feed you some. And that he did. Tippery's long, narrow ears perked up when he saw his bowl of dandelion soup. He sniffed it with his round nose, and then he lapped it up with his pointed tongue. But Patrick O'Michael O'Sullivan O'Callaghan still believed in leprechaun magic, and he cried, who ever heard of a leprechaun with no magic to make gold? For shame. Tippery's long ears drooped. He'd used up most of his magic in the hard times. Come now, where do you keep your magic, Patrick insisted. In your pocket? In your left shoe? In my fingertips, of course, said the leprechaun. But I was saving a wee bit for the worst time of all. Oh-ho, young Patrick sprang up. That worst time has come, my little man. I command you to turn this pot of dandelion soup into gold. I'm still hungry, Tippery complained. <clears throat> Will you make more soup if I do? Patrick agreed. Now, changing the soup into gold was st stirring magic. But what to stir with? It had been so long since Tippery had made magic that he'd almost forgotten how. He screwed up his nose to think, and he pulled his left ear. Oh me, let me see, he muttered. Patrick danced about in a dither of eagerness. Aha, said Tipperi. He blew in his fingers to warm up the magic. Then he stirred up the soup with the feather from his cap, but the dandelion soup only spit at him. Maybe, said Tipperi. He stirred the soup with a broom straw. Then the dandelions curled up. Or was it, said Tipperi. He hung over the edge of the pot and stirred with the long with his long left ear. The dandelion soup rumbled and roiled. The dandelions disappeared. And when the steam cleared, Tippery had a pot full of frogs, little green frogs hopping about. Tippery's ears hung down. I forgot how to make stirring magic, he said. Let's dig dandelions and make some more soup. No, no, have faith, you can do it, urged Patrick O'Michael. <clears throat> he pointed to the yellow puddle of sunlight on the floor. Sure, now you can change that into purest gold, he said. That was sprinkling magic, but what to sprinkle with? The leprechaun bit his pointed tongue and pulled his right ear. Oh, let me see, said Tippery. I wonder, he said. He dibbled his magic fingers in the puddle of sunlight. Then he sprinkled it with ashes from the hearth. The sunlight grew runny. 
It's coming, it's coming, shouted Patrick O'Michael. Suddenly it turned into a puddle of water. Hop, skip, quicker than jump. The frogs were in a puddle, splashing happily. Tippery slunk under the table, but Patrick hauled him out. Try once more, he begged. But this time Tippery had used up all of his magic, except for what was in his one little finger. Besides, he was very, very hungry. Let's dig dandelions first, he said. So Patrick and Tippery went out to the fields and dug dandelions. When they had a big pile, young Patrick pointed to all the rocks in the field. If only you could change those rocks into gold, he said. That was touching magic, hardest kind of all. Tippery had to get the magic in his little finger, lined up just right, and there was something he couldn't remember. Oh well, said Tippery. He grabbed both ears and whirled around three times. He reached his little finger out to the rock, touched it, and there was a golden flash. Quick, fast, Tippery ran about the field, touching rocks with his little finger until all his magic had run out. Then Tippery and Patrick O'Michael looked at the rocks, but not a glitter of gold did they see. The rocks were still brown. Wait, there was one that glittered. Tippery's finger. Tippery's little finger had turned into gold. Oh, the disgrace. Tippery looked for a place to hide. Oh, Bagora, Patrick O'Michael wailed. What, gold, what good is a golden finger? I would catch the most for forgetful leprechaun in all Ireland. And he gave one of the rocks a mighty whack with his dandelion shovel. But what was that? Sounds like a woodpecker. The rock split open and it was white inside. Tippery poked it. He smelled it with his round nose. He licked it with his pointed tongue. We might try boiling, he said. Patrick and Tippery gathered up some of the hard brown things and took them home. They put them in a pot of boiling water. When the things had cooked, Patrick and Tippery each took a bite, and the things were good. They may not be gold, but they're good to eat, shouted Patrick O'Michael. Hooray, cried the little man. We put them in the pot and we ate them. We'll call them potatoes. Pot ate pot a toes. Pot ate o's. Then young Patrick and his leprechaun had fried potatoes for breakfast, baked potatoes for dinner, and potato soup for supper. The next day they added dandelion greens to the potatoes and had potato salad. But they didn't eat all the potatoes. Tippery said they must save some to plant, which they did. When the new potatoes sprouted, they gave some to their neighbors, and then those neighbors gave some to their neighbors. Soon all Ireland had potatoes. But to this day, only the children's children of Patrick O'Michael O'Sullivan O'Callaghan remember that they can thank a hungry leprechaun for potatoes.